something about this wooden down here. Okay. So this is sort of an example of folk art that Mahler actually purposefully wrote the music based on this woodcut. And it is an engraving by Jacques Callot, who used the technique of layering in his woodcuts. So this automatically goes perfectly what Mahler is doing with his music, because he's layering things upon things, quoting himself, quoting folk tunes, putting all these things on top of each other. So it says, no master has known so well as Callot how to assemble together in a small space such an abundance of motives, emerging beside each other, even within each other, yet without confusing the eye, so that individual elements are seen as such, but still blend with the whole. This external stimulus for this piece of music came to the composer from the paradistic picture known to all Austrian children, the hunter's funeral procession. From an old book of children's fairy tales, the beasts of the forest accompany the dead woodsman's coffin to the grave, with hares carrying a small banner, with a band of bohemian musicians in front. And the procession is escorted by music-making cats, other four-legged and feathered creatures of the forest in comic postures. So let's see if we can find some of the comic postures. Also, they're walking on two legs. That's also a little weird, right? Um, yeah. At this point, the piece is conceived as the expression of a mood now ironically merry, now weirdly brooding. Okay, so starting at this point, I want you to think Mahler, there, this was also after Origin of Species was published, so there's this whole thing of animals' view of death versus humans' view of death. So why are the, the animals walking on two legs carrying the hunter's coffin? So they've killed the hunter. So right there, it's like total role reversal. Um, they are the ones who are jeering because they have defeated the hunter who is being buried right now. Um, yeah, so we have the Darwinian influence, we have twisting the knife about death, asking us these questions. All right, now I'm gonna go back to highlight our lovely bass player, Mitch. Hi, Mitch. Um, so he is gonna say a little word about this opening bass solo that you just heard. Well, typically in an orchestral setting, it's very uncommon for a solo to be given to the bass, where typically, <laughs> well, the bass. Um, and especially with something like this, it is much higher and more lyrical than the bass is typically um, <laughs> comfortable with. And as such, it has found its way into the standard bass orchestral excerpt repertoire. And it's just, it's much more exposed and therefore difficult than a bass is usually accustomed to playing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And Mahler actually wanted it to sound that way. He was imitating this bass fiddle um, that he would have heard in the Czech Republic growing up. So he wants it to have this kind of labored, strained sound, um, as opposed to like giving it to the flute or something. So Mitch, do you mind just showing us one more time? <laughs> This beautiful solo, because it's a really big one. Jewish wedding jig. 
All right, you may ask, why is a dance following a funeral march? That would be a good question. Um, basically, the traditional instruments in a klezmer band are uh, trumpet, oboe, clarinet, um, and which we'll be highlighting. We also have bass drum and cymbal, um, but we're focusing on these instruments for now. Um, yeah, so we're just gonna lean on in the next section. researching this stuff, is that Fiddler on the Roof was inspired by this painting by Marc Chagall um, called The Fiddler, which was painted in 1913. An interesting thing, I, I kind of discovered that Chagall would be the, the parallel painter for Mahler because he constantly is depicting death, and he was from a small Russian village, very much like Iglau, that Mahler was from in the Czech Republic. Um, and interesting thing, that in Through on the Roof, if I were a rich man, sounds very similar to this section we just played. So I'm going to have my favorite. Mahler brings back the Ferrajaka again. He's constantly, we have these three elements in this movement that are constantly coming in and out. The next element is the Zweiblauen Augen, which is a lead that Mahler had already written from what he calls the Songs of the Wayfarer. And it was from his fourth leader from this Songs of the Wayfarer, um, based on his love affair that went sour with the soprano, Joanna Richter. Uh, so basically, this is a very much about unrequited love, which happened to Mahler a few times before Alma. And so he inserts this gorgeous lead and quotes himself in the music. And he actually he wrote the text himself to this. You have, you have the text in your program if you want to turn to that now. Um, yeah, so what we're going to focus on, so basically, the blue eyes of his beloved haunt him. He wishes he were dead. That's what's happening. So in this, in this song cycle, the, the wayfarer kills himself in the end because his beloved is marrying somebody else. Um, yeah, so why is a dance following a funeral march? Again, sort of, does it seem mocking? Does it seem sentimental? But basically, what I'm seeing is this is like the hunter because the hunter feels sorrowful and abandoned because he's getting buried by the animals. So in the, the place in the symphony, we can kind of see this lover 
as the hunter. That's, that's kind of how I see it. Um, so yeah, now we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how Mahler transitions in this section. Aaron's gonna show us um, how he does it. <laughs> sudden it just opens up into this gorgeous G major song. Okay, so now we're going to play that one. Gorgeous, gorgeous love song in the middle of this movement. Then we move on, and Mahler layers all three on top of each other. So, what basically what we're listening to, we have the, the Frère Jacques, which we're thinking of irony and death, the role reversal of the animals and the hunter. So, the irony of the hunter turning into the hunted one. We have the klezmer, Jewish root section, with the thing fiddle on the roof, and that is celebratory. So that's like a wedding, a jig, a dance. And then we have the lead, which is this unrequited love, this kind of, this longing. Uh, so now we're gonna play all three of these as they are layered on top of each other, a little bit later. So let's see, let's have 
all you people who know who you are with your daughter. <laughs> okay, cool. There we go. 